You're listening to One Life Radio. This is Bernadette with Danny Miles, Tina Burnett. We've got Mike Smith here as well. So, hey, guys. Hey, guys. How are you doing? <sighs> <sighs> Tina was just, trying to tell me something before we went on the air, and it went like I was having such a blonde moment. I just uh, couldn't get right it. right over your head. Well, I had I'm to say visual. It three times. You didn't say it right. That's why. I did, too, say You're it too right. You're too busy dancing over here. <laughs> You know what? I'm telling you, if you want energy, at least me, to to uh, to, to uh, work out, I, I instantly get energy the minute music comes on, especially if it's music that appeals to me. I mean, I just start bouncing around. I can't help myself. Well, you heard my music blasting when I drove up to the station Did you? this morning. And I yeah, go on. I have to, I have to put my sunroof back and I just crank it. Well, I read something last week that if you actually, because we know that music motivates you to work out, you know, better and harder and stronger, but it also, um, if you're watching music videos, it, it even amplifies it more. Did you know that? Yes, but may I just make a comment that I, the only time I watch music videos is when I'm at, I have some clients I train at their house and they have a huge screen and their TV and their, mm-hmm. in their workout room and they're always playing um, music videos. Music videos. I have to tell you, it is not like it was when MTV first came out. These videos are so provocative and, mm-hmm. and really, I mean, to the point where I'm like, I don't ever want my kids watching this. I yeah. Mean, some of them are just outrageous. And it's kind of, there's some cool ones and great ones. Like, um, I think that um, Taylor Swift's videos are all, I mean, her new one, Bad, Bad Blood video is really cool. It's different. Really but some of those, too. some of those are just like. It's like strip dances on on the screen. Hmm. Strip tease dances, well, partially you know, mostly r- naked ladies. Most no, what? I'm talking about some of the some of the videos with all the women dancing on poles with g strings on and stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. that's all over the all over. Yeah, it's all over music. I don't want my daughter, my ten year old. Sorry, watching I, that. I just wish it could get back to the good old days in the '80s and when it all started. You know, you look yeah. at some of those old ones back when it was like. You know that just it was mainly just the bands on stage playing. It was just real funky ones, but I don't know. I just it was kind of it's kind of dis- disheartening to well, me. Well, um, yesterday I just said this has happened to um, be in the car with my daughter driving, and Tom Petty and the Heartbreaker song "Mary Jane's Last Dance" came on, and I love that song, so I always crank it up, you know, and play my air guitar while I'm driving, steering with my knees. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Oh, you never do that, do you? Yeah. We all do that. Don't lie. And, and so, um, and and she's like, um, I said, oh, you know what, honey? I don't know what 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 we were talking about. I said, that's a really um cool uh, music video that you ought to watch sometime. It's really bizarre. And so she pulled it right up immediately, you know, on her phone, mm-hmm. was watching it in a matter of seconds, and it was. Uh, she's like, this is crazy, mom, and it just you know. I've never seen anything like this. What does that mean? And just all the stuff she was just, it was it was funny. Because that's random. what, 20 years old? Mm-hmm. It was a whole different deal back then. Yeah. It's a whole different but, deal now. And wasn't it Kim Basinger? <laughs> She's so hot. She is. She's, she was hot. Which song is it? Which one of their songs is it? Um, Mary Jane's Last Dance. Isn't that the name of it? Anybody? Danny? Where'd Danny go? There you go. That one? Yeah, that's He's it. He's there. He found it. He's always on target. I love stuff. this song. I was listening to Stacy's Mom's Get Got It Going On. <laughs> on I think that's in a commercial, actually. Yeah. I Here can't wake go. up without some good music in the morning. I Thanks, Danny. This. Thanks for the music. Yeah, l- wait. Yeah, play it. So up in Indiana town. There you go. This song just makes me bop around. <laughs> and you're bopping. And I'm bopping. Well, speaking of bopping. <laughs> <laughs> did you know that um, the dad bod fad that our, our, our biceps out and beer bellies in? Did you hear this story? What? No. no. I'm serious. It came out of the San Francisco Chronicle. Yeah, this um, is like the new trend now. It's the new the trend. dad bod. The dad bod. You heard about it, right, Danny? Well, of course. It's well, been it's been around I, for the okay, past. Okay, uh, enlighten me because I well I'm, I, it broke about just a, having a hard time with that I, one. I don't want to say you're slow to the party, but it 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 broke. That was you know it's been around about a month. Well, Has that's it been not that long. long. Okay. So what does it say? Well, it just says uh, uh, that the dad bod is not an overweight guy, but it isn't the one with the washboard abs either, says Clemson undergrad Mackenzie Pearson. They work out, but after the gym, they happily scarf down pizza and, and guzzle beer. Uh, in other words, the dad bod <laughs> is more like poppin' fresh and less uh, Michelin man. So I've never liked like the Michelin man. I don't, I, I, you know. Well, I don't, I don't like guys that are so lean that they're, it's like hugging a tree. You know, I, yeah. mean, I dated a guy one time that was just so lean that it wasn't even fun to hug him because it yeah. was just, he, yeah, I like having a little extra cushion. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, but I don't think they need to go and chug 
beer and eat pizza. I mean, you yeah. know, they just have a healthier diet and they may have a little extra fat on their body. And I think that's a good thing. Well, and they're, and like you know what, the, you know what it is. It's a guy that's comfortable with himself. Yeah, that's, that's what true. it is. Not somebody who's so who's so tuned into the external and, and is missing the internal, which is at the end of the day what really matters because anybody can slip and fall and break their leg or do whatever and lose their 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 buffness, whatever, in a instant. Well, and a lot of guys that are so ripped like that, that's they're, they're so consumed with just being perfect all the time with everything. That they're, that they're, that not they're, fun. they're not any fun. They're not, well, and they're just their narcissist- little bellies, a little fun. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, belly. I think men would say the same thing about a woman <laughs> who's obsessed with how she looks all the time, that it's just, it's a turnoff. And she can't go out and eat, eat, you Takes know, her three hours to meal. get ready. She said, you know what that is? At the end of the day, that's just a lot of insecurity is all that is. Yeah. When you can't walk outside without having your hair a little messed up or no makeup or, Like me you know, today? Like, yeah. I didn't even, or, I didn't even really look at my hair. I just got out of bed. Well, it looks good. It yes. does. It looks bed, cute. I got the bedhead look. Hey, it's in. So thank hey. God. You know, to <laughs> accompany the uh, the dad bod, there's the mom bod now. Oh. Which What's is the mom bod? Mom bod is pretty much the same as the dad bod. Mm-hmm. Having you know, a little extra fat. Just extra fat. You know. F What's your that kids, old expression? A little more marks. cushion, the easier pushing, or whatever. <laughs> oh yeah. And there are some women after you know after Gotta a have few something kids. Something to hold on to. Well, there are a few. You know, after a few kids, <laughs> oh, like their body is just doesn't. Go back to what it used to be with the stretch marks and stuff like that. So that's why they're kind of to you know give the dad bod a little bit of company. Well, and the you mom know, bod is out. and you know, if as you age, especially women, it looks healthier. You look younger if you have a little extra fat because mm-hmm. if your face, if you're so lean that your face is really, really lean, it makes you look older. It makes your wrinkles show well, more. You look know at what? Hollywood. Well, when I get too well, thin, I look like a little boy. I lose my curves. You know, I do. No, I do too. I'm so. the, you're like me. We both have the narrow hips and the yep. narrow shoulders, and yep. you know, so I'm the same way. So you gotta yep. have a little extra on there. But the, adding the muscle is the key too for that, though, because you can really change. You can add s- s- curves by adding muscle. Well, it says here it's that, gonna um, add that in. instead of the perfect body, women are looking for instead. Many women are looking for guys who have good careers, love kids, Money. and offer a soft tummy to lay on after a long <laughs> day of work. Amen, sister. <laughs> I have to agree with that. I do. Tight torso and thick biceps are too busy at the gym uh, to own businesses and keep the kitchen clean. Um, yeah, keep the kitchen clean. I don't want. I don't want. Well, I mean, I guess I wouldn't mind my husband my helping husband's a little bit. So but, good about that. He yeah. cooks and yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good thing. And yeah. the, and they should be, especially if you have kids. It's about a family thing. All being in the kitchen together and. Helping out with with the family meal, and yeah, I agree with that. So the dad bod says, I have a job, I have responsibilities, and enough money to nod approvingly when someone says, guacamole is extra. <laughs> <laughs> what do That's you mean so guacamole funny. is extra? Oh, that t-shirt going around, I know, guacamole is extra. You haven't seen I've that? I've never seen that. What does that no? mean? Where do you live? Where have you been living? I, I live you got to go double. out with me more. I, I get haven't out seen it there. either. <laughs> you haven't, haven't either. Seen no. it. Oh well, thank you. I'm with you young. guys. I haven't seen it either. So I you guess... haven't. What does it mean? Guacamole is extra, like extra money. Well, like a Chipotle, you always have to pay extra. Guacamole costs more. So why so is that on point? a T-shirt? But it's always worth it. <laughs> I don't get it. What <laughs> if you're if you're either. overweight, you wear that shirt? Guacamole is extra. Well, it's just like I already know. Guacamole is extra. I is got it, it. Is it guacamole or guacamole? Guac. Guac. Is it guac? Yeah. 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 I, I believe so. I thought the G was silent. Well, it I says that the why. dad bod has become such a lively debate the on the internet that there's even a backlash movement. Did you know this? No. <laughs> a backlash of the lean <laughs> guys know. fighting against I'm, that? I'm, I'm just reading it. I'm just reading it. Yeah. And I think the point is a man that, that has the perfect body obviously has to spend a lot of time on it and effort. Right. And so and they, he's ha- not they don't have the time <laughs> to be the good dad and the father and all that stuff and yeah. have a good job. And I agree because a lot of the guys that are super lean and, and all that aren't, aren't you know. Well, I I'm personally. Not, you know, I'm going to stick my foot in my I'll take a guy a with a little more flub that can maybe spend some time reading that after I'm done with him, he can have an intellectual conversation with me. How about that? After you're done with him? <laughs> What do you mean by that, Bernadette? <laughs> anyway. <Never mind. laughs> You're listening to One Life Radio. We'll be right back. She grew up in an Indiana town, had a good looking mom. She never was around, but she grew up tall and she grew up right with the Indiana boys on an Indiana night. 
Cold and flu season is now upon us, and according to the CDC, at least one in six Americans will get the flu virus this year, and that's not even counting people who will get flu-like cold symptoms. And to make matters worse, the U.S. Health Agency issued an advisory to doctors suggesting that the current flu vaccine is not a good match for this year's influenza strain that is circulating everywhere in the United States. The good news is, the long-awaited, highly anticipated, and doctor-developed homeopathic cold and flu nasal and throat spray called Flunata is now available to the public. Flunata is recommended for treatment of cold and flu virus-like symptoms. And Flunata is most effective before you're sick. So use Flunata at the very first sign of cough, body aches, sore throat, or runny and blocked nose. Fight the flu naturally with Flunata. You can find Flunata at your local CVS or Walgreens or visit them at stshealth.com. Have you ever heard of the Squatty Potty? As featured on Shark Tank, some things just make sense. A healthy toilet posture is very important. The Squatty Potty is doctor recommended and fits any toilet. The modern day toilet is convenient, but one major fault it requires you to sit. While sitting to do our business may be considered civilized, studies show that natural squat position improves our ability to eliminate. So check out the Squatty Potty at SquattyPotty.com. That's SquattyPotty.com. Hello, I'm Michael Ray Harris, attorney at law. Let me tell you my story. I caught an insurance company trying to take advantage of my mother. I saw how they try to take advantage of people in need. I saw the games they play. I saw some of the dirty tricks they try to use. I'd like to take what I learned in my mother's case and use it to help others. If you need my help, please contact me. My email address is info at michaelrayharris.com. My office is in Dallas near Mockingbird Station. Once again, that email address is info at michaelrayharris.com. Welcome back to One Life Radio. This is Bernadette with Danny Miles and Tina Burnett. We've got Ryan Lowry on the line. He is a master's student in exercise and nutrition science at the University of Tampa. And he is such a great guy. Today we're talking about what is contributing to what is what is contributing to being overweight. <laughs> it might be that chocolate bar I ate last night, Ryan. I don't know. That's becoming a nightly thing. For I you, know. Bernadette. I can't stop it. Every time you it. come on the, the show, you talk about butter. the chocolate you ate last yeah, night. I know it. So, is that contributing, Ryan? Uh, it's, uh, it could be. It, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to be nice, but yeah, yeah actually, duh. Well, you, you know, know uh, that's what he should say. So let's talk about this. So, you know, what is contributing to really to all of us being so overweight or a little overweight like me right now? I got a little chub. I'm trying to lose, you know, <laughs> just a little. What about the mom bod? I wish I got, you'd quit no, using that I don't word. have the mom bod, but I have somewhere in between, you know. <clears throat> um, but, but yeah, so last night again, you know, I'm eating my 73, 73% extra fine dark chocolate. Um, and I eat 80. And I only, uh, well, Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> she one upped me right on the air. Did you hear that? <laughs> you know, and so, you know, but you're going to, that's, that's reality. I'm sorry, but you know what? I'm never c- cutting out my chocolate. I'm just not. I'm not ever completely cutting it out, c- you know, cutting it out. Do you have to keep it in check, though? And so, what are some other things that we really need to be aware of in order to, uh, to keep our, ourselves from getting too overweight? Yeah, absolutely. And, and the one that we always talk about on the show is, is inactivity, and and I, we can't stress that enough how important being active is, because a lot of times people come and they'll come up and they'll be like, you know, when I was a kid, I could eat anything, and I just couldn't put on weight, and I was just, I was the exact same way. Really? Um, but your your body changes, right? When because as a kid, if you think about it, you used to tell your kid, oh, sit down, like like you're you're not fidgeting so much. They're always moving, they're always on the go, and because of that, their metabolisms are ramped up. They're burning through calories so fast. But as adults, we're sitting at jobs. We're, we're, we're living a more sedentary lifestyle. So we need to remember and actively and consciously be aware of 
hey, we need to get out and be active. Well, and what's contributing, I think, to the obesity of children and some adults is the technology, you know, uh, like the computers, yes. the video games, and just everybody being on their phones all the time. Um, there's an article on the in Scientific American from, I think, last month that says the, the title is Metabolism and Killer Chairs. Standing more, even at a desk job, could lower the risk for obesity, illness, and death, studies suggest. Yes, I That's love right. this because it, it, it's actually funny. People, people who have walked into the lab recently at at, a, at our university, we had Dr. Wilson and I have boxes that we've collected and we put them on our desk now. So that way we have standing. We've made our own little standing desk because we don't like sitting as much anymore. Yeah, I, I had to sit. I had my hair done yesterday. I had to sit for two hours and it almost killed me. Like oh, I, I hate getting my hair done I, for that I, reason. I hate it. My back was killing me. I had to keep getting up. And 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 she she said, "Wow, it was is it the chair?" And I said, "No, I'm just not used to sitting down. I never sit down. I the only mm-hmm. time I I sit down or I don't sit down. I lay down for the for the broadcast right now. I could stand up, I guess, and do it. Maybe I will. We've I done used to, that before. We've remember? done that before. We've done standing With Jill. broadcasting. We've done mm-hmm. standing we broadcast. Do um, which is <laughs> I'm serious. We did. We used to do it. Jill and Tina and I back in the day. It was my idea, of course. <laughs> and there's a few days that I stood and you sat. Now, I, you know what? I'm You're not like, going to. I just cr- can't do it okay. today. But you know, but those kind of things they they do matter, and 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 they do contribute to being overweight, being uh, in a sitting position for too many hours. And Tina's up shaking uh, it now, my, to Ryan. I just got to tell you, my headset doesn't doesn't reach my ears there's, if I stand there's up. There's just a lot of tomfoolery here today. I'm sorry. You know, um, so what's the difference between um, let's go let's go to food now? So because I know that good quality food, high quality, low quality are something that's mm-hmm. very important. I was telling someone yesterday that was talking to me about diet and nutrition and sports and all that, uh, that that you cannot um, out-exercise uh, a poor a diet. diet. Yep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely right. And there's a huge difference between low-quality and high-quality foods. Um, and basically, it's going to be, a lot of it's going to be based on how, how much it fills you up, things like fiber, because low-quality foods, such as like processed foods, they're filled with chemicals, have very low nutritional value to them, right? But mm-hmm. they, they taste great. You can have things like potato chips, which, which taste phenomenal. You can eat a ton of them, but they have very low nutritional value. Um, but having something that can fill you up more, having something with greater nutritional value, that actually means something, like, like a protein shake or even having like a salad that will fill you up, all of those things are, are going to be higher quality. Well, and you know, um, so yesterday you would be proud of me, you guys. Here's what I did, and I think that when you make selections like this, and as far as your diet, eating high quality food, you can have a little piece of chocolate. I didn't have a lot, but so yesterday when I got home, you know, uh, it was kind of like a bachelorette night because my other daughter was busy, so we just kind of, you know, ate what was already in the refrigerator leftovers. And I had a a big bowl of celery that I had chopped up from another when I made chicken yummy licious from a couple days ago. Um, <laughs> I saved the the celery sticks and chopped them up, so I knew I'd have them for a little snack of later on in the week and so anyway I um, and then I had this bean dip left over um, from True Foods and so instead of getting crackers or some sort of high carb you know uh, to, to, to eat the rest you of the bean the dip I used the celery and I was so proud of myself and it really was delicious <laughs> and nutritious was that, before, was that before or after the chocolate no the chocolate's always at the end of the night <laughs> before I go to bed that's my little like my little mouse lots treat. of fiber with the celery and the beans yeah and it was yeah. you know True Foods of course has really high quality food. You're speaking of high quality, but it's not like it was. We're not talking about you know expensive fancy food. We're talking about just some really well prepared. Um, I think they. I don't think they. I don't know what kind of beans they were, but it they wasn't, were. Isn't it a hummus dip? Is no, the they. It's just like some beans, and then they have chopped tomatoes on it, and a little oh, okay. um, cojita cheese, and then you know, cojita, not, cojita, not a lot of cheese, teeny tiny tiny, just enough to give it a little you know cheesy cheesy flavor. But you know, I was pretty proud of myself. Um, no, that, that's that's fantastic because it's honestly it's the little it's the little choices the little decisions like that that are going to add up over time. And so, how do people avoid binge eating? And when you and first of all, let's describe binge eating. How do what would you say binge eating is, and how can you avoid it? Well, a lot of people, to be honest, a lot of people they eat they'll have like a really big meal and they just won't get they won't feel hungry, and it's kind of like that. Um, the effect that we've talked about before, when you go to like a Chinese buffet, you can eat a ton and you're never, you're never, you're always hungry still. You're never full. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what's going on? I get the same thing if I were to go to like a fast food restaurant and get a huge cheeseburger. It's a ton of calories, but I'm not full. And the reason is because we're, it's lacking 
like a lot of the satiating, the, the full factor, things like fiber. Um, and you're, you're, again, your stomach is like a balloon. You have to remember your stomach's like a balloon. It, it's got a lot of room. And when it fills up with room, it's going to signal things to say, you know what, I've had enough. So preloading your meals with water is a great idea because you're, you're taking away some of that room. Having a big salad before you eat is another way to do it because it, you're, you're adding bulk to the food, to, the, to your meal. Yeah, and that's important. It is. Um, I was reading an article the other day, Ryan, about um, how, uh, how big of a part that stress and depression um, play mm-hmm. and can impact how well you do or don't do fighting the battle of the bulge. Oh, this is so huge. And, and, and again, one of the many reasons why I love this show and, and everything you guys stand for, because it's not only about the exercise, it's not only about the nutrition, it's about the social aspect as well, psychological aspect. Because stress and depression can leave you trying to binge eat. They're going to raise things like cortisol, which are going to cause you to store more fat, especially in the abdominal area, which is exactly what we don't want to do. So to avoid that, you want to, you want to reinterpret the stimulus. If you're feeling stressed, you have to reinterpret it. So you know what? It's really not so bad after all. I'll get this done when I get it done. We'll be okay. Things are going to turn out all right. And that can actually change the emotive response. Changing the emotive response can change the physiological response. So you don't, you won't get those stress hormones like cortisol and things like that. How bad are liquid calories for you? Ooh, these, these are horrible, right? You Except know, for a protein like, shake, right? Now, a protein shake, because yeah. I've got mine here. I've got my protein it shake with my... It doesn't have a bunch of stuff added to it. I, I did it with water, and I've got creatine in it. You'd be proud of me. Oh, I love it. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. But things like soda, right, liquid calories, like, like those iced teas that have a ton of sugar in them, they're, they're wasteful. Again, it goes back to having like more bulk food, filling up that stomach, filling up that balloon. They're adding a ton of calories, but it's not really filling that up very much. Well, well even some of the juice, you know, the, the juice bars and stuff oof. like that, you know, I mean, people, it's all supposed to be so, so healthy, but a lot of them are just loaded with lots of sugar calories that, yeah. that you know, of course, depending on what you have in, you know, if it's a lot of greens and stuff, that's not as bad. But if you're throwing any fruit or even carrots and apples and stuff like that in there, that can that can load it up, too. Well, and of course, bikini weather, you know, everybody's <laughs> going to be in their bathing suits. I, I wear my bikini around the house sometimes just to keep oh myself my in check. I do. It's comfortable in the summer. I do. And it, it, it's oh. just comfortable, you know, day wear, whatever. You crack me up. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, and the reason I asked that, so what are some quick steps? Because we, summer bikini weather's here. Okay. What are some quick steps you can do to limit weight gain? Yeah. So one of them, one of them is get moving. Like we said, exercise, do something extra each day. Something that I've started doing is taking a walk at night. So I take about a mile walk at night and that's actually helped me a lot. Um, eating better, right? You don't have to eat perfect. But making those little improvements, like you, you choosing those celery sticks over the crackers, doing things like that are really going to help out, especially during the this, this summer season when we want our bodies to be at our peak. Um, control binge eating uh, through preparation and portion control, right? That's going to be huge. Um, take steps to avoid stress. Remember, reinterpret that stimulus. Don't let that cortisol get up. Uh, reducing liquid calories. Avoiding excessive carbohydrate consumption, mm-hmm. and, to, and the last one is just to live a balanced life. Right? Take care. There of you go. Laugh, love, smile, and enjoy. Yeah, and and have your chocolate because you know what? When you tell yeah. somebody they can't have something, it makes them want to crave it more. It makes them crave it more. I believe that. You know, I've kind of exactly lived right. my. Yeah, you got it. You can't tell yourself. You can't. You can't tell yourself. You know, absolutely no. I can never have that. I don't think that's a healthy way to live. All nope, right. Not at all. All right, Ryan. Thank you so much. I always love having you on the show. Coming up, we've got Jeanette Brone. She wrote the book, uh, and this is great segueing into this, Eat to Feel Full. She's a certified holistic health counselor. She's got a great book that uh, teaches you all about and how to nourish yourself for a better life. Coming up next, you're listening to One Life Radio. We'll be right back. Oh, 
lot of people don't like talking about going to the bathroom, but did you know that the modern day American toilet is not ergonomically correct? And why does this matter? It matters because this design flaw may be the root cause of constipation, bloating, and colon health problems. The one and only solution is the invention of the original Squatty Potty, the world's first patented design, easy to use, doctor recommended squatting device designed to cleanse your body and make you feel great. Go to SquattyPotty.com and get your Squatty Potty today. That's SquattyPotty.com. Hi, this is Bernadette. Do you know what the average cost of a DUI is? It's $10,000, but that's just the monetary cost. What about what it does to your reputation and your future? That's why when I want to go out and chill with my friends and just relax and have a couple of drinks, I call Uber. So be smart and be safe. Just download the Uber app and use the coupon code UberOLR. That's UberOLR and get $20 off your first ride. Hello, I'm Michael Ray Harris, attorney at law. Let me tell you my story. I caught an insurance company trying to take advantage of my mother. I saw how they try to take advantage of people in need. I saw the games they play. I saw some of the dirty tricks they try to use. I'd like to take what I learned in my mother's case and use it to help others. If you need my help, please contact me. My email address is info at michaelrayharris.com. My office is in Dallas near Mockingbird Station. Once again, that email address is info at michaelrayharris.com. Welcome back to One Life Radio. This is Bernadette with Danny Miles, Tina Burnett, and our special guest today, Jeanette Brone. I hope I'm saying that right, Jeanette. Is that correct? You are very close, but I don't expect a Danish accent from you with a French name. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have to tell you, I read your book. I really, really enjoyed it. The name of it is Eat to Fill Full and Nourish Yourself for Good. Uh, Jeanette, you are a certified holistic health counselor, and, and this book is really, really uh, interesting. It really is. There's only one thing I don't like about it at the very, very end where it tells me I shouldn't eat my chocolate. And if you were listening, <laughs> if you were listening to the podcast before that's the only thing in the book that I say well I don't know about that but but everything in it is so amazing and I love the way at the very beginning you ask everyone to really close their eyes first of all and I did this and think about how they feel about food what are the first thoughts that come to mind and I have to say for me it was indifference and which is a probably Mm. I would say a good thing right well, it can be. It could also mean then, then that, that your choices don't become so nourishing and mindful and that you're just sort of picking food as you go along out of convenience. Mm. Well, well, that so sounds that familiar. Could be, well, you know, that, that could be part of it. So, that, so yes, indifference could be good if, if you're actually really steering your choices to really like food is my fuel and I don't care if it's this, that, or it just matters that it, that it works for me because there's no attachment to it. But it could also be that you're then actually not checking in with your choices and how it makes you feel. Well, I'm going to have to think about that. (laughs) (laughs) And so I'm going to ask you, how did you get to a point? Why why did you write the book? Well, the the big part for me is that people came to me uh, back in the day when I first started doing this work. I wanted to work with people with cancer because I'm high-risk cancer myself and there was cancer in my family. And I saw that people came in really wanting to change how they ate for their health, but they didn't do it, right? Because they keep getting stuck in the habits, in the attachments to food, in emotional eating and things like that. Yeah, and and so... No, go ahead. Go ahead, yeah. So over the years, I realized that emotional eating is such a big part of what's happening, and the dieting mentality really puts it into that place where we feel like we're we're not the solution, and we are. Well, and I know you've got 10 years of experience uh, dealing with your clients with emotional eating. You're an emotional eating expert, which is very, very interesting because there is such a huge connection. There's so, so many yes. people out there that suffer with, with food addictions um, and, 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 and just, you know, really, really struggle with it. So wh- how do you help your clients overcome their struggles um, while avoiding the restrictive nature of just dieting? Yes. And actually, I will have to say, I'm not saying you can't have your chocolate, but I'm saying make it the best you can absolutely get. Don't just 
stick in the jaw, right? Yes. It's, again, about, you know, it's about, like, I call it choosing up. Yeah. Like, choose up, like, better quality stuff. So one of the ways that we work with this with my clients is to actually first become mindful of their habits. Because our habits is what keeps getting us stuck because they're so automatic and so mindless, right? And it's that sense of, like, walking by the cookie jar, we get triggered and we take a cookie. We think that might be emotional eating. Well, yes, it may be, but it could also be that we didn't get enough food for lunch and then we're, we're kind of hungry, and then it's really hard to resist those cravings. Well, and so and it, it, we it's... talked about before, too, with the fiber and things like that, like our foods are too empty. Yeah, and as you know, you you talk about your emotional eating, and so is that why it's so important to you know uh, in the beginning of the book where you asked people to uh, take stock of their feelings yes. first. Yes, yes, because we need to feel our our bodies in our we need to feel our bodies as it relates to food. Right, that's how we become nourished. Yeah, if and- we are eating from this very mental place about whether this is good or this is bad, then we're coming from a judging place already. Okay, and so it's important to have your basic food knowledge as well, and I know that yes. that's uh, uh, throughout the whole book, and I think that's really important too because there is so much information out there, and you kind of just break it down in this uh, s- quite simply, just things as simple as whole grain facts um, and, and fats that are good and bad for you um, and real food for the real you. Um, yes. Let's talk about um, how does the book help people lose weight without dieting? Because it talks about what to eat, not what, it doesn't say very much about what not to eat. It gives you the, the sort of like overview of some of the choices and why it might not work for you so that you can actually create a relationship with the food, whether it works for you or not. Like I have clients where I say, just make the experiment of, of, of eating these foods and see how you feel. And they come in and they say, well, I feel I have so much more energy. I feel so more satisfied, satisfied and my cravings are actually less. And then we automatically focus on what it is we can eat more of, what makes us feel full and nourished. And then it becomes this sort of like crowding out almost all the other foods instead of saying, oh, don't eat this, don't eat that, which tends to be our diet mentality, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm a bad girl if I eat that stuff. Well, what is it? Or what? I'm sorry. Yeah. Or, or, Or we sort of have this like, oh, I shouldn't be eating it. And then, as you said earlier, uh, then we want it more. Right. That's exactly right. And, and and that's pretty much kept me pretty fit and remained about the same weight for many, many years. And so what are some other things that, that help us master our hunger? They, they, that, and that it's, it's exactly what helps us lose weight is that we get our hunger in check, meaning that we're not running around being starving and hungry or feeling empty from our food. So, Fiber and fat is like sort of like the two easy to easy to remember. Fiber and fat, right? right? And fiber comes from all those whole foods instead of processed foods, like you also talked earlier about in the program. It, it's the choosing foods that are cooked instead of coming in a package. Yeah, and um, prepared. I, yep. I like in the book where you talk about why less animal protein is more. Can we can we talk about that? Sure. Um, we tend to overeat on the animal protein. And a lot of times what happens is that if it's salty or because it's, there's not much water in it either, in the sense that, you know, it's a dried out piece of meat, we tend to then crave something else after. We tend to crave sugar after we eat salt. Hmm. I, so I, we can kick ourselves into that changing, changing our cravings a bit. Sure. But animal protein can also be harder to digest, which is good in the sense that it takes longer, but if it's in excess, it changes the balance. Well, and in the book you wrote that acidic foods like meat increase inflammation in our bodies, which leaves us struggling with out-of-control hunger and weight gain as well as disease. Yes, it does. Because inflammation is part of also mastering and managing our sugar intake. So inflammation comes from high protein in terms of animal fats and processed food and, and from sugars. So when we have a lot of inflammation in our bodies, we actually also crave more food because there's that sort of like insatiating hunger. We can never fill the void kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had like a meal where you feel stuffed but not actually satisfied? Yeah, Chinese I, I food. It, <laughs> yeah, I call, I call it empty full. 
Yeah. Like you're empty full. But if the meat is cooked with less salt or no salt, I mean, doesn't it depend on how you cook it and which kind of meat it is? I mean, it does. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it so, does depend a lot on that. I think and, if you go out to eat a lot, and a lot of restaurants oversalt their food. Every, yeah, it, yeah, they it do. Meats, it's horrible. And every time mm-hmm. I go, I just tell them don't put any salt on it. Yeah, and we're not talking about fish here. Fish, you consider like a very healthy option. Is that right? Yeah, I do, because also the the fats in the fish that are high on omega three fatty acids are what we call anti inflammatory fats. Mm-hmm. Well, so and that I, actually helps our bodies instead. Well, and I know uh, you, you talk about dairy in the book as well. You say to master your appetite. I don't recommend including dairy in your, in your daily food choices. And can we talk about that? Because I think this is very important information to get out there. Yes. A lot of people get recommended to have dairy and cheese and things like that. But what I've noticed is that that is one of the trigger foods for a lot of people, especially with emotional eating. Well, I know with me, I love my cheese, and I think I I never really thought about that, but you write that dairy can also become a trigger food for overeating, and it's difficult to stop eating it once you start, and I can totally say, uh, that's me. I love my cheese. Yep. And one of the things that happens is it's the perfect combination of fat, sugar, and salt. Well, there you go. And they even put sugar in in cheese as well? No. No, but it's the milk sugars that are automatically in, ah. in dairy products, right? So you're getting like a frozen yogurt or, or an ice cream or things like that. There you have that perfect, uh, the, the perfect food that's called the bliss food. Hmm. Right? You're, you're getting that bliss point where you feel basically addicted. Well, so for the people out there listening, what is a great place that, and so what is something that would help anyone no matter where they're starting, where their starting point is right now? I think the real starting point is to, number one, notice your habits. Make sure you get a rhythm of meals so that it doesn't become this sort of like, oh, I forgot to eat. Now let me grab whatever I can catch on the road. Because it's really hard to find something when you just have to pull over by the side of the road and go in there and be like, I need food. Yeah. You're going to get processed food. Right. And I always say to people, listen, if you were carrying your baby with you, you would make sure the baby has food. Why don't you do it for yourself? And what's the number one tip you want to give our listeners about how to control their emotional eating? Um, That is make sure that you allow your emotions to be what they are, but know that you're not supposed to fix them. You're supposed to feel them. And you can do things like walk and pace, for example. That's a good way to, like, when you're anxious, right? We don't have to sit and eat our anxiety away. Mm Mm-hmm. But we tend to reject our emotions instead of saying, wow, I'm really anxious right now. And then instead of just saying, what am I so anxious about? What can I do about it? Yeah, and hence the word holistic because, you know, we as humans are a complete system. And I think people forget that. I'm always fascinated when uh, doctors and just people in general disassociate one with, the, with, with another. And, and it's, that's really what we're talking about here at the end of the day, isn't it? Yes, it is. It our- is indeed that. We're complex people, and that is amazing. That's a good thing. Jeanette, I love your book. Everyone out there, it's a great little book. Eat to Feel Full. Jeanette Brone, that's B-R-O-N-E-E. I I, I think you should get it. It's a really good little handbook. Janae, er, excuse me, Jeanette, thank you so much for being on One Life Radio. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You can also find it on pastforlife.com. Okay. All right. And we'll put that out on Twitter as well. We'll be right back. Are you suffering from seasonal allergies? <laughs> Air Vita Allergy is a homeopathic throat and nasal spray formulated to provide fast, non-drowsy relief from many common allergy symptoms. It's natural, steroid-free, non-drowsy, with 14 active homeopathic ingredients, and it's physician-formulated. It's made by the makers of Flunata, and it works. Think of it like an allergy shot, slowly building immunity to all those allergens out there. You can find Flunata or Airvita Allergy in your local CVS or online at stshealth.com. That's stshealth.com. The single easiest thing you can do to instantaneously improve your health is to take omega-3 fish oil. Be careful though, not just any fish or krill oil will do. In fact, most fish oil doesn't even work. 
Here are some facts about Ocean Blue Mini Caps and why it's the most superior omega-3 product in the world. It's the purest and highest potency omega-3 product available over the counter with or without a prescription, nine times more omega-3 than krill oil, and three and a half times more than standard fish oil. 88% pure compared to 30% or less to most other products, clinically proven to maintain healthy triglyceride levels and help support the health of your heart, brain, and joints, and is critically important for healthy hair, skin, and nails. Ocean Blue Mini Caps have zero aftertaste with a delicious vanilla flavoring, easy to swallow, and gentle to even the most sensitive stomachs. Start taking Ocean Blue Mini Caps today. Find it at your local CVS or Walgreens or visit them at OceanBlueProfessional.com. Hi, this is Bernadette. Do you know what the average cost of a DUI is? It's $10,000, but that's just the monetary cost. What about what it does to your reputation and your future? That's why when I want to go out and chill with my friends and just relax and have a couple of drinks, I call Uber. So be smart and be safe. Just download the Uber app and use the coupon code UberOLR. That's UberOLR and get $20 off your first ride. a brick house tina burnett you know what you're listening to one life radio this is bernard bernadette with danny miles what's your name again my name's bernadette right yeah <laughs> with tina burnett tina burnett is uh is an amazing trainer one of the top trainers in the whole country and we are fortunate to have her as a regular on one life radio right from the very beginning uh she's been here for a long time with us almost four, four years now over four years yep. so pretty awesome and today we're talking about it's all about balance uh, and this is important. This is really, really, oh, what, oh, I got the wrong sheet. Okay. We're not talking about, it's all about balance. <laughs> no, but that's next week. That's you next look week. forward to it. Okay. So, all right. We're talking about spot reducing and spot training. Well, there you go. I need some spots reduced. So let's talk about <laughs> it <laughs> and balance it while we're doing it. Well, balance is always a part of, of fitness. Always, always, always. We talked about it this morning. I've got a hip that's tight. You know, yes, you do. I'm out of balance and that's why I'm having a little bit of back pain. And I, and when I go work out today, I'm going to focus in on that spot. Did you like that segue? Yeah. How I fixed good. that? Thanks. I cleaned yeah, that baby cleared right that, up. Cleared that herb up. <laughs> yep. So um, let's talk about this spot training versus spot reducing and what, what, what are they and which one is possible to do? Okay. Well, people still to this day, ask me, you know, how do I get rid of the fat around my waist or this fat on my leg or whatever? And they're like, what exercises can I do to get rid of that? And I still get asked that. And basically what they're asking is, you know, how do I burn the fat off this little area right here? Well, yeah. unfortunately, you really can't because your body is kind of predetermined. Your, your, how you burn fat is predetermined really by your genetics. And where your body wants to burn fat first is up to your body and your physiology and you so can't do anything about there, you, it well and i'm going to add something to that in a minute but basically you can't well, you can decrease your body fat with all the things that we talk about on this show you know with ryan and all of us that we've talked about you know the nutrition aspect of it activity staying you know staying active and the exercise portions that i do as far as you know fat loss type workouts and all that stuff we talk about it that, that's how you get rid of body fat and you got to have the balance the balance and you've mm -hmm. got to have the complete program but you can't go in and do and people still kind of think if they do a bunch of crunches they're going to burn the fat off their stomach mm -hmm. you know and or do a bunch of leg lifts or squats and you're going to burn the fat off that area you really can't do that you can that would be what spot reducing is 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 you know but spot training is working a specific area to develop the muscles in that area what are the most common so a guy it's his gut danny are you in on this guys it's his it's the <laughs> yeah. well the, and <laughs> older women as women get as after 40 women start because of hormone changes putting on weight in the middle if they're premenopausal you know the ab fat yeah. women get that more men kind of always have that issue you know that's where it goes first they'll have like no fat on their legs and butt and it's all in their gut well and for a woman you know her inner thighs her outer thighs always have a little bit of you know um 
most women. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not yeah. say fat, but you know, uh, little, what do you call it? Well, if fa- cellulite. But I think whatever. it makes you look sexy. But I not do. If, but not if it's flabby fat. Not and flabby. The thing just... is, if you'll spot train those areas, and so many women are afraid to do work, do heavy lifting with their lower body because they think they're going to just get big. And mm-hmm. you know, you what can make the fat? You can change the appearance of that fat. By toning the muscles underneath. Making the muscles, developing the muscles. And because it actually, it actually kind of, it because it expands the muscle a little bit, it kind of spreads out the fat and can actually make it look different. Mm-hmm. And because you're adding muscle and you're doing those high intensity workouts where you're burning more calories, you're getting your body where it's better at burning fat by doing the, the big movements with your lower body, the squats, the deadlifts and the lunges and all that stuff that actually helps bring the body fat down faster. So in, in the end, you kind of, you could say, well, that is spot reducing, but it's it's not. It's just because you're you're developing the muscles in that area. You're creating a body that's a mechanism that's going to burn fat better and it's going to look better. Now, you know, we talk about skinny fat. People that go out and run yep. and run and yep. run and do all this cardio and they yep. don't do anything to really develop the muscle and right. create some muscle and they get smaller, but they still have that fat sagging right. on their leg. That yep. doesn't look good. I think I think a lot of young girls would agree. You know, they lose their butt. They got the skinny fat thing going on. Their legs are skinny, but if you check their body fat percentage, it would be high. Yeah, you know, but and they don't. They might look good in clothes, but they ain't looking looking good naked. Yeah, naked. You know, one of the biggest, (laughs) one of the humorous things I see in the uh, in the gym all the time, and for guys, you know, we want to get rid of our love handles. And I always see them doing those with the dumbbell on one side, doing side, you know, mm-hmm. uh, bends. And they think that that's going to spot reduce, and it isn't. It's not. And it's amazing to me that people still do stuff yeah. like that. They really do. And that's why I've, I've talked about this before a while back, and I thought, you don't want to bring this back, because I was recently asked by a client, mm-hmm. two different clients, you know, how do I get rid of this fat right here? You know, because people are still trying to think that they, what exercise can I do? Well, it's not, they want, it's not as easy as just an exercise. It's, right. It's everything you're doing. It's well, the it's nutrition. Genetics it's the too. sleep. It, well, genetics too do play a role. I mean, some people have tend to have like women sometimes will have really skinny upper bodies and right. then, and a lot of excess fat in their hips and yeah. butt. And th- you can't do anything about that. But you can add muscle to your upper body, up, develop up your upper body, and by adding that extra muscle and getting your nutrition where it needs to be, listening to Ryan and mm-hmm. all of his talk, and then doing the workouts and the exercise, that you'll eventually get the fat down in your lower body. It may never look like, you know, what you want to look like if you have this ideal you want to look like Barbie doll or something like that. Mm-hmm. But but you can change it, get it down. But it, it does take, you know, it takes effort and it takes work. And a lot of people just want it something as simple as give me an exercise to do. And they'll do that one exercise and that's all they'll do. <laughs> You know, so, thinking well, they're going to burn the fat off that area. Well, we talked about bikini weather, you know, be coming up with upcoming holiday. So, uh, you know, all these guys that want the six-pack abs. Is that, how do they, you know, is that a reality? Well, it, well, yeah, you can get it, but it's not by doing abdominal exercises is the point. You yeah. know, it, it's it's not, I mean, men, so you see, if you go to a gym, you always see men doing tons of crunches and stuff. And you know my... Crunches aren't theory good for your crunch. back, my, right? It's not even my theory. It's Dr. Stuart McGill has a whole book, videos, and everything. He's studied for years and years and years on the spine. And what his his goal when he kind of first started really getting into this uh, study was, what is the main cause of disc degeneration and disc bulges and herniations? Because pretty much everybody gets, as you age, you have some random bulges throughout your spine, and that creates all sorts of problems with pain down the leg. And, you know, if you depending on the size of the bulge, and then degeneration is, is pretty normal through aging. But you can actually speed that up by doing... Well, what, this is a study. What he did is he developed this mechanism that basically emulated a crunching motion. And he put human cadaver spines. He put all kinds of like real spines in there and had this machine do like a, it's called trunk flexion or spinal flexion mm-hmm. repeated. And he said after about a th- thousand flexions of the spine, every single spine he saw started to have bulging and degeneration in the, in the disc. Wow. That's important to get and out there. And that's like all those multiple crunches you're doing. And the, the thing you got to think about is what his point was, not only is it damaging the spine, but the benefit of a crunch is so minute. It doesn't mm-hmm. really work the abs that well. And it only really works your rectus abdominis. 
and his, and he's developed this whole all these videos and stuff and he works with elite athletes and professional athletes on true core strength and strengthening your abs and it's not by crunches it's it's exercises i mean i'll have people that sit there and do crunches and i'll have them do you know like the plank exercise we're mm-hmm. talking about where you get on your hands and feet and yeah. raise your arm out to i'm the gonna side. do some of those today very few people can even do that exercise and, and it's a it's a great measure of how are you really that strong have those crunches done anything for you and no all they it's risk to benefit is what you're well and i at. think when i when when you we train me the one of the things that that uh, it's about awareness too you know when you're when you're doing a plank or doing what, what's a the exercise whatever the name of the one that i do the, the, where you it's what, there's not really a there's name not really for a it. name it's, for it's a it. plank where you, you you hold the plank and you have to keep your pelvis neutral you and, you raise one, an and then you raise the one arm up so you're basically on three legs you become a three-legged dog but you can't <laughs> rotate your body you yeah. have to keep your pelvis completely right. neutral. But the minute the you say to me, Bernadette, your abs, tighten your abs, I'm like, oh, yeah, because you forget. But but just simply doing that, by the end of the workout, the workout is so much better. It's so much more intense. And and, and for me, I recover very quickly um, or get results very quickly. In one workout, one really hard workout like that, my abs are tighter the next day. Yeah, all my clients, when I train them, I'm constantly saying that my, my keywords are always hearing from me. I, I think people hear it in their sleep now is, yeah. is keep your abs tight, keep yep. shoulder, shoulder blades. Back. Shuttle blades down and back. Yep. Maintain your neutral spine and keep keep a slight tilt in your pelvis because people are t- bend at the hip because people want to throw their pelvis forward and, yep. and slump and throw their knees forward. So, you know, I think it's it is important. You do have to be aware of your body and know how to make those muscles work. And one thing I wanted to mention really quick because this was interesting. You got thirty seconds. I have a client that <laughs> has. There's sometimes you have muscles in your body that don't activate very well. Mm-hmm. You might have to go to someone that does MAT or something. The one side she had one glute area that was not activating, and that side. Actually Actually looked different than mm. her other hip. The fat looked more apparent, and when she started getting where she could activate those muscles more, it changed the way her leg looked. Oh so yeah, I've seen it myself. It, it, it's it, that's one point I wanted to bring up. And that nice if legs a, if look the muscle's good. Muscles not activating. It's not gonna. It's gonna you know make the appearance of the fat look different. Yeah. No, so. I I hear you, sister. I can't wait to get out there today and move my body. I'm gonna work it hard. You've got me fired up. (laughs) You know what? You get one body, you get one mind, and you get one life. Get out there today and make the most of it.